Hi, I welcome you to our online worship service for this week at the Hastings and Roseneath Pastoral Charge. And this week is the fourth Sunday of Advent with the theme of love. And uh, for the service time beginning Sunday, December 20th. So as we gather for worship this day, I pray that God will richly bless each and every one of us as we gather to worship God. Let us begin our worship service by singing together our choral intro, Hope Shines as a Solitary Star. It's from More Voices, number 220. And I invite you to substitute the word love for hope in the hymn. gather on this day, we gather in the light of Christ, that light that has shone for generations now, and that light which the darkness has never overcome. So at this time we light our Christ candle. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Thanks be to God. Invite us into our responsive call to worship. Welcome to this time of worship. A time when the light of this season beckons us forward. A time when we can come and rejoice for God's light is coming to us. A time when we can say, Praise be to God who pours light into our lives. May we always be ready to respond in joyful ways to God's love. And may we open our hearts and spirits and receive the Advent blessings of God as we worship this day. Let us join together and sing Voices United, number one. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
join with me in prayer. Let us pray. We come to this place this day, God, to be nurtured and fed by your spirit. We need the peace, hope, joy, and love that this season represents. We need to listen again with wonder at the magnificent words of Mary as she proclaims her faithful participation in God's most miraculous gift. Open our hearts this day, Lord, to receive the words and the blessings and the symbols of true faith in you. As we are fed this day, then we can go and share with others as you have shared with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over the past three weeks, we have lit the candle of hope, the candle of peace, and the candle of joy. And we relight those candles for this week. The angel Gabriel spoke to Mary, giving her assurance that She had found favor with God. It was God's intent that this messenger would reassure Mary as she was about to take on a role and a relationship that would overwhelm most people. God's messengers, angels, are all around us, assuring us of God's presence and preparing us to risk taking on new roles and relationships. We light this fourth candle of Advent, remembering the Gabriels in our lives who point us to the living presence of God, the angels that point us to the love of God within us and others and within this world of ours. I invite you to sing Hope is a Star. It's from Voices United number seven. And we will sing verse four about love.
first scripture reading today, gospel reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 46b to 55, the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. I invite us to sing together from more voices, number 134. There was a child in Galilee.
And our second reading for today, our gospel reading, is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In this reading is good news for God's people. May the spirit of the living God be with us today. Amen. Loving, most gracious God, may what is said and heard be in the spirit of you, our living God. Amen. A few words about holy disruption. Familiarity can lead us into a comfortable sort of half-attentive state. Did you know that most car accidents occur within a very short distance of our own driveways? We are so familiar with our area near our home where we drive that we often let our guard down, don't pay enough attention, and make a mistake in our driving and bang, we get hit. I've had this many times at my own driveway where rarely is there a car coming the other direction on the road. I should say my old driveway since we've moved from there. But rarely was there a car coming the other direction. See, but you had to be attentive because sometimes one might be coming that way and you would just turn in front of them. And do you have a friend who likes to do this? They do not do a particularly good job of listening. Well, they might be hearing, but they're not really listening. And they know a story so well that when you're trying to tell someone else, they jump in and finish the story for you. They know your story so well that they are in this comfortable, half-attentive state, and they forget their manners, and they can't keep quiet and just listen for a bit. And how often have you done this? Some things we do are just so routine that sometimes we might lie in bed and then our minds start to think, did I turn the stove off? Or did I turn off the lights? Or sometimes we might do it in the morning. Did I take my medication this morning? Yeah, I've had it happen to me 
You just do something so automatically that you just can't remember if you actually did it. In this case, familiarity with routine leads us to a place where we are only half attentive to what we are doing. It's like we're on autopilot. Most people find comfort in the predictable and can grow unsettled and maybe a little angry when disrupted. When we are sort of surprised into full attention again. How familiar and attentive are we when we're on an adventure, a different adventure? Not at all, because we're doing something very unfamiliar. And we really pay attention. This week's central Advent reading, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, is among the most familiar of the Advent stories. It is retold in numerous paintings and sculptures and songs and poems and homilies. An angel appears and announces to the Virgin Mary that she's going to have a child and she will name him Jesus and he will be given the throne of his ancestor David. Well, the shock and surprise and challenges of the story can be lost while Mary is launched on her life filled with faithful risk and holy adventure. Part of being ready to serve the holy is being awake to the adventure of that service. Mary is awake, which means she's also troubled by what she's told, been told. Bearing a child of David's house isn't the surprise. She's due to Mary Joseph, who's from that family. Bearing a child right now is the surprise. And it will bring hardship beyond childbirth. Angelic visitations are not sweet moments of comfort in the Bible. Angelic visitations are only happen when someone is about to live into something really wonderful that is also really scary and really difficult. If you like a simple, peaceful, and predictable life, the last thing you want is an angelic visit. It signals for most people holy disruption. But if you're already struggling like Mary in this week's passage, the invitation to love's great adventure is both troubling and thrilling. We're ready to be of service to the good in the midst of what may be familiar grinding inequity. Being ready to live in the adventure of serving bold compassion and courageous love means living in faithful risk. And that is scary and it is unpredictable. It took some time, but eventually Mary was able to engage the angels yearning for her. And she jumped into this holy disruption in her life with its predictable challenges and probable suffering along the way. Like Mary, if we're to serve faithfully, we can't first ask how to manage the risks we're facing on the adventure that's been announced. We might be pondering those concerns in our heart, but we also, like Mary, have to find a way to focus on the goodness in the adventure. We have to be really ready to say, like Mary, here I am. We have to be ready to obey the message of the angel. Yet, Mary's story grants us another mercy. Before she says, yes, here I am, she asks, say what? <laughs> Surely not yet. When the time comes to us to serve abiding love 
through faithful risk, through adventures perilous, through trials predicted but unknown, we too can have our say what? Surely not yet moments as we reawaken to here I am, the servant of the Lord. So here we are in the fourth Sunday of Advent, heading into a Christmas season unlike any Christmas we have ever known. Perhaps we are unprepared, nervous about COVID-19, not ready, and for many of us, anxious and disappointed that we cannot see many friends and family. Our attention focused on how we are going to survive through this busy holiday time. Here we are, and today we focus on Mary and can think to ourselves, wow, how did she do it? After all, she was very young. Our lives are being disrupted in many ways, but her life, this young girl's life, fell into this big holy disruption. And with what happened, the news of this birth traveled far and wide and without the aid of social media, internet, or news reports. The Holy One often invites us onto this great adventure of faithfully serving goodness with bold compassion and courageous love. Many people have their, hey, wait a minute, wait, <laughs> not yet, moment. The disciples had theirs. Mary and Joseph, they had theirs. And we often have ours. May we have the courage of Mary to have our wait, not yet, transformed wholeheartedly and joyfully to here I am servant of the Lord. May holy disruption come to us in a way that breaks us from our inattentiveness to God's spirit abiding within us. To Jesus the Christ who knew us and loved us before we were, who loves us now and will love us forever, thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Let us join together and sing from Voices United, number 47. Still, still, still.
At this time, I send greetings out to everybody, wishing them a very Merry Christmas. And also uh, be prepared to receive the uh, Christmas Eve service through uh, internet connections and social media. And uh, I will have that ready before Christmas Eve, of course. And um, we also thank many people who continue to make offerings to our pastoral charge. We are very grateful for your continuing support of the ministries of our churches. And with that in mind, I invite us into a prayer of dedication for your offerings. Let us pray. We put our very lives before you, generous God, presenting our gifts and our offering. May the love with which we offer our tithe, our time, and our talent be reflected in our desire to be in touch with the love you reflect on our lives. In the name of our God of love, we pray. Amen. And thank you also to those who support the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada. This week's Minute for Mission is entitled Humanitarian Aid for Rohingya. And it will be in a text form this week. Will you join with me in our pastoral prayers, which will be concluded with our Lord's Prayer, sung to Voices United, number 959. Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift before you this day our prayers of the people, prayers of love and concern, our prayers of thanksgiving. All of these prayers that Help our heart, mind, and soul to know how much you intervene into our lives and others' lives. Let within each of us our hearts prepare room for you, O God, so that within us heaven and nature can sing. And no matter what is going on in our lives, God, and, and in this world, May we still find deep and abundant love welling up in us for you, O oh God. For it is in those times of knowing your deep love that we are most with you and you, God, with us. May we sing and pray and praise your name 
even when we don't feel like it, knowing that love will come to us, love will return to us, and love will be with us always. For you, God, are with us always. You, God, are love. So we offer our prayers for those who are ill of mind, body, or spirit. Those who are in care facility. Those who may be feeling lonely at this time of year, Christmas time. Especially when they are unable to leave their home and to visit with friends and family. We pray also for all those who will continue to be frontline caregivers and our communities. Those who will be working through the Christmas season. The doctors and nurses and healthcare workers. The janitors. The cleaning staff. all of our people who help in some way within our communities with services. We pray also for each one of us as we make our way through this season. Offering prayers for those who have made the decision, the intelligent decision, to have a Christmas season where they will not endanger their loved ones by gathering in close quarters. For that is a, a brave decision and a smart decision given how easily this virus tends to spread. So we pray for everybody who is positive testing for covid but more so for those who are in care facility and hospitals, being cared for and loved by diligent staff. Blessings for each and every one of us. Gracious God, you are the one in whom we rejoice, and we know that all things will be made right and we offer these prayers this day in the name of the coming babe of Bethlehem, Jesus Christ our Lord. The one who gave us the words that we developed into our Lord's prayer, which we offer at this time in song. Let us join together in a closing hymn, Joy to the World. It's from Voices United, number 59.
responsive commissioning. As you go from being in this time of worship, wherever you have been celebrating and praising God, we go to await the coming of God's child, the one who comes to bring hope, peace, joy, and love in our life and to our world. We go to show ourselves to be God's people as we reach out to others in love and charity in our world. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you this day, now and forevermore. Amen.